today on Kaboom. We've grounded the crystal whale at the bottom of a thousand feet of ocean. What do you think it wants? Wants? We still don't even know what it is. Everyone could survive this if we get clear fast. Jump in and don't let go. Hey, everybody, welcome to Kaboom, a show full of original audio adventures for the whole family to enjoy together. I'm Sam Payne, and I'm here with Brian Tanner. Hey, Sam, I'm really excited for this one today. So on each episode of Kaboom, we take you to new places with new characters and new situations. And today, we'll visit the bottom of the ocean on an experimental submarine. And as you're listening to this, you might consider, the ocean is full of massive creatures that humans have rarely seen. What would happen if one of them decided you might make a nice meal? (laughs) And that's just one of the things that could happen to you underwater. Yeah, way down under the ocean, it's like another planet down there. Exactly. And with those thoughts in mind, Kaboom presents the original audio adventure, The Crystal Whale. Do you read? Over. Miss Howard, this is Crystal Whale Helm. Can you hear me? Over. Howie, this is Tell. Can you hear me? Are you out there? Over. It's dark as a, a tomb in here. Are you sure you're even pressing the right buttons, Tell? I'm pressing the right buttons, sir. I'm not sure the comms work, though, with the power down, but I'm, I'm pressing the right buttons. When was the last we heard anything? Twelve minutes and sixteen seconds past critical, sir. Howie, can you give us anything? Anything at all? Over. Is it possible that she's still alive? There's no reason to go there yet, sir. Just because we can't see her through the windows. Submarine covered in windows? What kind of experimental Mickey Mouse sightseeing boat is... She's probably fine. But it was an experimental suit. Untried. And now 12 minutes and 16 seconds past critical. 12 minutes and 35 seconds, sir. Yes, but clearly that time has been far more eventful for us than for her. She's got plenty of oxygen. The suit, which is incredible, is rated for depths three times where she's swimming. And the thrusters on the suit are rated for twice the test speed. So are the suit's comms. But we haven't heard from her in almost 14 minutes, Sandy. I mean, the whole suit test was supposed to be shorter than that. I know. I know. The point is, the speed shouldn't have strained the suit at all. The prototypes were all able to handle these conditions. And she handled the launch like a pro. You saw her. Well, as well as the sub handled getting into position to catch her? Enough with that, please. We got jumpy. The suit is fast. That's how I designed it. And for us, the race from the jump off to the pickup, we just got jumpy. You got jumpy. Right. I got jumpy. And you shouted a navigation order, which Tell obeyed, and now we've grounded the crystal whale at the bottom of a thousand feet of ocean. Just look out the windows and see. It's too dark to see. Yes, you're right. Grounded. A thousand feet of ocean. Which is why... Which is why she's safer out there. Miss Howard. Miss Howard, over. Tell. Let me take over for a minute. Of course, Sandy. Howie? Howie? Kit Howard, you answer me this... Listen. Baby, this is your mom. The last 12 or 13 minutes have been pretty rough. Mickey! Lights? Engines? Anything? Nothing! All gone! I'm working by flashlight in here! McGee, can't you... I'm working on it, Captain! I mentioned! I'm working by flashlight in here! We're all working by flashlight, McGee! Sandy! We clipped a ridge while we were getting into position to catch you, and we rolled the sub. It's... it's my fault. We're on the bottom. We don't have any power. I know you're only 15, but you're the best test pilot in the whole operation... Sweetie, I know you're fine. We don't know why you can't communicate with us, but I just wanted you to know we're... Captain Mauer! What is it, Till? Out there, beyond that ridge! A flash of light. Sandy, look at this. A flash of light? What on earth? But we 
we're dead again. As a doornail. Captain, that light. Yeah, what about it? It's gone. Sandy, look at the comm screen. Words. Tell, it's just ghosting from whatever was on the screen when the engine spiked. No, Sandy, that's a new message. Sandy, he's right. Look, coming fast, voice calm down, something behind. That's, that's it. That's it. Oh my, Howie, where is she? Captain, that light again. It's blinding. What the? What about everything? Everything, lights, power, everything. How did that, uh, oh, never mind. That light, what is that? This is? I've never seen. It looked like it was on fire. Bright as the sun. But it's just faintly glowing now. It's enormous. That is the whole ship. We're down again. Nothing. No power. No engines. Nothing. The hatch. Howie. Is everybody okay? What's wrong with Howie? The... Howie. Made it. Yeah, it took me a while to find it at the bottom of. You know, the bottom of the ocean. Mom, the suit is super fast. Yeah. That's how I designed it. Uh. What do you think it wants? Wants? We still don't even know what it is. At least I don't know what it is. Sandy? <gasps> do you know what it is? I've never seen anything like it in my life. Mom, it's incredible. Was it behind you during the whole test? Just about. It came out of nowhere. I felt like a fishing lure. But I was running away from it. I never got a good look at it. But now... It's incredible. Listen, guys, I also think it's incredible, but I've got some questions. There's some stuff about this that I don't understand. You and me both tell. I mean, think about it. It comes screaming toward us like it's going to rip us apart or eat us or something. And now it's here. It's just... Staring at us. Yeah. And I might add, we're just staring back. Anyone want to talk about the problems? I mean, we're still completely dark. No engines, no lights, no nothing. But we had engines and lights a minute ago. Why did they power on suddenly and then off again? The comms too. We couldn't talk to Howie at all and then suddenly we could and now everything's dead again. If I knew the answer to that. The creature outside, whatever it is, seems to have plenty of juice. See it softly glowing? I wish we could get a little of whatever's making that thing go. Wait a minute. Captain Mauer. What? What did I say? Listen. The crash killed the power. It, it killed the engines, too. That's fact A. We couldn't do anything, and we couldn't get the comms working. We couldn't communicate with Howie. Okay. That's fact A. Is there a fact B? Yeah, there is. While we were trying to find Howie, we could see this thing in the distance. Before it came rushing up to us, we could see it out there, lit up. Like the sun, you said. Yeah, like the sun. I've never seen anything so bright. Well, that's fact B. There better be a fact C in here. I think there is, Tell. When the engines and lights were going crazy in here, this guy, whoever he is, was shining bright as the sun out there. Am I remembering that right? Go on. And when our friend here stopped shining, the crystal whale shut down again. Isn't that right, McGee? All I know is that we're shut down now. I gotta get this stuff going again, or we're gonna be in a real fix. Come on, McGee. Try to remember. You know, I think you're right. And it happened again when we heard Howie through the comms. As the fish, or whatever it is, got bright, we had power in here. Are you saying that whatever it is out there jump-started us in here? That's exactly what I'm saying, Captain Mauer. I don't get it, but I think that's what's happening. Wow. Wow! Well, let's give it a test. How do we turn on those big, fishy batteries? I don't know. I have no idea. And why is it just staring at us? I mean, if it was hostile, if it wanted to destroy us, it could just drag us around the ocean floor or, I don't know, stomp on us or something. It's big enough. It doesn't want to destroy us. What? Howie? Did you say something? It doesn't want to destroy us. How do you know that? It was chasing me because it was hungry. That's what I think. That's how it got here, but that's not what it wants now. Go on. 
Howie? Let me put it this way. Mom, do you remember in the lab when Dr. Warner's middle school kid, Charlie, came to observe like a month ago? I remember. And I remember Charlie spent the whole time staring at you. I've never seen such a crush. And you were oblivious. Not entirely oblivious. I remember, for example, how a kid looks at a girl when he Twitter pated? You think that they Wait a minute. Are you saying that creature out there is in love with us? Well, not with us, exactly. With the sub. It's in love with the crystal whale. Wow. Wow! No time to talk any further about that. Look, something's happening. It's getting brighter. I don't like the look of this. Man, my eyes. It's like looking into the sun. I've got everything. Everything! Tell. Get us out of here. Now. Yes, sir. Everyone, hang on to something. We're moving. We sure are. And it's coming along. Man, that thing is really in love. Maybe it'll lose interest. Mom, how long did Charlie Warner follow me around the lab? Are you kidding me? He'd still be following you around the lab if Dr. Warner hadn't dragged him out to a Taekwondo class. Get us out of here, Tell. On it. Thing. Oh, Harry. 
How about that? Mom, the suit is incredible. Howie, you're a wonder. Is everyone okay? I think so. That was some ride. I saw every engine I've ever worked on flash before my eyes. Did I hear you give an order back there, Sandy? An order on my ship? I... You... I guess you did, Captain Mauer. It saved all our lives. Where's the sub? Where's the crystal rail? There it was! At 200 yards! That sub was something. The creature was something. And, uh, Miss Howard, <laughs> you're a remarkable young person. Um, thanks, sir. Wait till the guys at your school hear about this. The guys? Let's not even think about guys after this. Not even Charlie Warner. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Swim. I don't get it. Who's Charlie Warner? The Crystal Whale, an original audio adventure cooked up in our secret Kaboom lab. Stick around for a preview of next week's episode, but first... One of the reasons we love all kinds of stories here at Kaboom is because they can lead to some great conversations. Here are a few of the places we went when we were coming up with today's episode, and we think you might enjoy talking about them too. You know, as we heard in the story, a crush can be a powerful thing. And one thing that I love is when my daughter, who is in second grade, gets home from school, she starts breathlessly telling me about all the crushes and how they have changed since yesterday. Because <laughs> at that age, they do change. And it changes the whole dynamic of the classroom. And it's just so fun to see young people caught up in the thrall of a crush for the very first time. <laughs> I remember my first crush. I was in second grade, and uh, I had a crush on Reese Healy. Blonde hair, beautiful little girl, and boy, I loved her. I'll tell you, I made the mistake of telling my brother I had a crush on Reese Healy. And he came home from the city park telling me that he had seen down there a little blonde girl writing Sam plus Reese in red crayon on the curly slide. Well, of course, we rode our bikes down there to check it out, and we saw the words Sam plus Reese in red crayon on everything at the park in my brother's handwriting. He had done it all. Little brothers, right? Well, Sam, now you've made the mistake of telling me, and I think you're going to see <laughs> Sam plus Reese written all over your office, all over the place here. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I love about this story is how Sandy trusts her 15-year-old daughter, Howie, enough to not only let her pilot this brand new experimental suit, but in the moment of danger, she listens to her and says, okay, we're going to do your plan. You know, a great plan can come from anywhere. And sometimes people just dismiss people because they're younger or have less experience. But I love seeing stories in which the adults trust the young people. You know, that's where this story took us. We want to hear where it took you. You can email your thoughts to kaboompodcast at byu.edu. That's kaboompodcast at byu.edu. And if you like the show, please rate us and leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. It can do a lot to help more people find the show. Now, here's a preview of our next episode, an original audio adventure about a boy who finds a magical comic book that sends him back in time. Next time on Kaboom. Uh-oh, Dad. I got my grubby hands all over your spider. Get out of the way, Alec. Look... It reminds me of my dad, okay? Hey, Liam. I thought you weren't allowed in stores anymore. Just the stores I get caught in. Hey, that kid! He took your comic! A little preview for The Comics Trip. That's on the next episode of Kaboom! The Crystal Whale was written and directed by Sam Payne. The cast included Brent Marshall as Captain Maurer, Stephanie Breinholt as Sandy, Darcy Ramirez as Howie, Noah Kershiznik as Tell, and Haley Nemeker as McGee. The sound team for The Crystal Whale was led by Dan Carlisle and Clark Jackman. With audio engineering, dialogue editing, and music editing by Daniel Davis, sound design by Andrew Brewer, Daniel Davis, and Carly Wilson, and mixing by Garen Brett. 
This episode was produced by Heather Bigley, Sam Payne, and Brian Tanner. The Kaboom staff includes Hannah Harlan, Evie Hendricks, Trent Horton, Jared Langford, Beth Nielsen, Lacey Olson, and Natalia Reeve. Our audio engineer is Carly Wilson. The Kaboom theme music was written by Sam Clawson. If you're looking for more great storytelling for families, check out our companion podcast, The Apple Seed, available wherever you get your podcasts. Kaboom is a production of BYU Radio. BYU Radio.